What I'm about to propose to you is both highly lucrative and highly dangerous. Some things just get better with age. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV Silver Foxes. Well then, have some friends. Sherlock. Sherlock. And may God rest his soul. For this list, we'll be looking at the male stars of television that still know how to make people swoon, despite having a little gray in their hair. Round two goes with the jackass. Due to a few reveals down the line, a spoiler alert is in place. So when can you start? Tomorrow, 9 a.m. Number 10, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. I've got another offer. May I ask from whom? No. Although Chris Noth is as charming as ever, we've decided to go with another silver fox from The Good Wife. Jeffrey Dean Morgan has recently let the gray come out, and while it definitely suits him, we can't deny he was looking just as good as the comedian in Watchmen, as a patient able to win Izzy's heart in Grey's Anatomy, and a hunter in Supernatural. Maybe I'll just shoot you. With his rugged charm showing no sign of wavering, we can definitely say we're glad he's portraying Negan on The Walking Dead. Well, I'm a very impressive person. Number 9, Ted Danson. Where is she? It's not gonna be that easy, DB. Where? From serving booze to catching criminals, Mr. Danson has done it all. And it seems going full gray has done little to slow him down or diminish his presence on screen. Right. Jules, they got Katie. What? McKean. His, his people, they took Katie for payback for his son or something. A key member during the final seasons of the long-running CSI, he later joined the roster for the spin-off series CSI Cyber to inject some of that crime scene investigation's magic. So let's do a little geographic profiling. On foot, Jake could what, travel a radius of about three miles? Oh, and if you're not convinced he can pull off sexy, then you may want to check him out as the villainous but dashing Arthur Frobisher in Damages. Look, there are things that are beyond my control, you know that. I am trying to settle this case. Try harder. Number eight, Max Joseph. Pick up DJ and head to North Carolina. Oh, man. Some guys go gray a little earlier than others, but that doesn't mean they can't pull it off with style. Whoa! The co-host and voice behind the camera of the hit reality show Catfish, Mr. Joseph perfectly plays off of his partner in crime, Neve Shulman, as they look behind the keyboard and screens to see if people are who they say they are. To me, it's like, yeah, like, why didn't he tell you about the kid? Why didn't he tell you about the boyfriend? Mm. Why didn't he come to see you? It's all the same question. Mm. We can only guess that this cameraman is only going to get better looking as the years go by. The video chat thing, you know, what's yeah. your theory on why he won't meet her? I really don't understand it, because if I was talking to someone for eight years, yeah. I would want to talk to him. Right. Number seven, Matt LeBlanc. How you doing? We all love Joey Tribbiani, and Joey Tribbiani loved all the ladies. So, uh... How are you doing? <laughs> Who would have thought the actor behind him would become even more of a diamond with age, though? With the success of episodes, the former friend star has grown beyond his signature role, going from the boy next door to a handsome gentleman whose suave silver look is nothing short of delicious. Hey. Thought I could smell Joey. Too much? No, I like a man who can wear a Cinnabon. Kudos to you, Mr. LeBlanc. We cannot wait to see more. You are going to be so wonderful in this. I can already smell your Emmy. No, that was me. <laughs> Number six, Anderson Cooper. You seem to have your workout program down as anyone who has seen you in a t-shirt can attest. Following all those nitty gritty news stories, especially at a time where the political melting pot looks like it's about to overflow, it's no surprise that a reporter would go gray, but Mr. Cooper has certainly managed to make it work. <laughs> <All right>. Sorry. <laughs> He's tackled his fair share of major events, from tsunamis to presidential indoctrinations to royal weddings. Well, the countdown, of course, is on to the royal wedding, in case you haven't heard. Acknowledged as the most prominent openly gay journalist on American television, he's certainly someone to look up to in the world of news coverage. And it doesn't hurt that he's also rather dashing. Time now for the ridiculous, and tonight we're adding drunk people. Number five, Rick Fox. Rick Fox. Rick Fox. From the court to the small screen, this former player for the Los Angeles Lakers has branched out into the world of acting in his later years. Dante, hey man, um, I don't have your money yet. I tried to get a loan from my mom, and it turns out she's not doing so good. I know it's 10 grand. 15. What? Needless to say, the transition hasn't made him any less desirable. Appearing in a multitude of hit shows such as One Tree Hill, The Big Bang Theory, and Ugly Betty, Fox proved that he's got the look and the acting chops to carve his way through the industry. 
Now that's a slam dunk. I gotta, I gotta get a kiss. It's Valentine's Day, man. I gotta get one kiss. Number four, Eric Dane. Are you new here? Visiting. Confounded by all the rain, and it's only my first day in town. How could we not include an actor who's best known for playing a character nicknamed McSteamy? McSteamy. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Mr. Dane certainly lived up to that name throughout his run on Grey's Anatomy, portraying a plastic surgeon with the habit of pursuing forbidden relationships. Hey, we all made mistakes, Addison, all three of us, Mom? but somehow, somehow, I lost my best friend and the woman I love. While his departure may have crushed the hearts of fans, you can see Dane resurrected as the protagonist in the new post-apocalyptic thriller, The Last Ship. He may have swapped his doctor's attire for that of a naval captain, but he's still as steamy as ever. I take it you're my new house guest. I'm Commander Chandler, ship's captain. Number three, John Stewart. My name is John Stewart. Oh, we have a nice one for you tonight. Politically poignant and terrifically hysterical, this is the man that made the Western world keel over in laughter. Fully functioning by November, but <laughs> as of now, for some reason, the site continues to give people hepatitis. We don't know. <laughs> the former host of The Daily Show wasn't afraid to poke fun at all stupidity, bad decisions, and hilarious chaos that flourished in the United States which often made him an enemy of a certain Republican news channel. Let, let, let me be clear. When, when I said end of November, I did not say which November. <laughs> let, let me be clear about that. It was clear that beneath the jokes, there was a man who deeply cared and strove for equality and goodwill. All of us <laughs> who were lucky enough to work with you for 16 years are better at our jobs because we got to watch you do yours. Recently seen rocking the silver stubble look, Mr. Stewart made us laugh our butts off while also making us weak at the knees. Yes, it was last Friday night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Gay Rights Time. After a week of tense negotiations and dueling protests featuring brutal gay versus Jew bullfighting. Number two, George Clooney. We're live from Chopper 5 with Dr. What's your name, Dr. Doug Ross. It might have been a long time since the Academy Award winner donned the surgical apron of Dr. Doug Ross. But since it was a springboard for his hugely successful career, we've still got to take him into account. Dr. Ross! Hey, Joey. You say Ben. We're his parents. How is he? And boy, have the years been kind. Terrific. With a seemingly infinite amount of charm, this actor slash producer slash writer slash director was playing the handsome doctor long before it was a cliche. And even as he nears 60, he is no less gorgeous. A truth we could see if we had, but... If we had... Ha! Faith! 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 We're pretty sure he's gonna be a silver fox well past his twilight years as well. Good luck. Thank you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. So do you think I giggle too much? No, I find your giggling charming. Now, some of you might ask, how is this food related? F if I know. You know. As soon as I saw you, I knew there was no need for a DNA test. Where are you going? Going after the young lady with the automatic weapon. I'll get her. Number one, John Slattery. Roger Sterling. Eleanor. Eleanor Ames. <laughs> what a great god that made two of you. Our Silver King is none other than one of the maddest of men to ever work in advertising. As Roger Sterling, he lit up the small screen almost as much as Don Draper. We need you to continue your excellence in advertising, but also to start treating this like part of a bigger business. The decadent drinker and womanizer may not have had our approval at times, but by God did he capture our intrigue as he spiraled through the hit series. I really need to get to the bottom of that. Throughout his phenomenal performance, John Slattery managed to show that despite the abundance of gray, he could thrill, scare, and entice viewers with ease. The tickles. Soft as a lamb's ear. You gotta feel this. Silver has never been so sexy. Hello there. Are we winners or losers? Uh, losers tonight, but winners in general. Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite TV Silver Fox? You're looking at it. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Wondering what's going on?